good morning and welcome to the Millennium Report. My name is William Lawson. The Millennium Report is a production of FightBackMedia.com, 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 and FightBackMediaTV.com. Plus, that you are well this Tuesday morning. Uh, it is, yeah, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Love, <clears throat> it's a lovely, it's lovely weather here in the um, West Central Florida area. Uh, it was in the 80s yesterday. It's going to be in the 80s again today. Uh, no clouds in the sky. It's just lovely. Uh, it's springtime, or uh, or as um, one of my favorite TikTokers mentions, it's summer. It's summer junior. Well, it's hot. I mean, mid 80s is hot, <clears throat> but the humidity is down. So when humidity shows up and the temperature stays the same, then we can declare it summer. I trust that everybody has survived um, April 15th, tax day. Yay. <clears throat> There's something inherently awful and terrible and wrong about that entire thing. And maybe we can fix it. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to talk about this, this American and human hubris uh, that we can fix things, that we can change and get in stuff. Uh, I mentioned a long time ago that um, uh, during football season, I, I was watching a game and I saw on the end zone, uh, it printed there, it said, end racism. How? How? Something that, I mean, that level of, of hatred has existed from time and tradition since, since, since people have been people. And suddenly, we think that we can end it we can stop it we can just end it we don't have to do this anymore we can just stop it we can have laws we can we can shame people we could just end it how something that is that transcends you for sure and you may not even you know you you may not even do or have but we can end it we can end it because of our by force of our will as humans I got news for you. No, we can't. No. And I, and, I, and I know that doesn't make people happy when I say it, when I say, no, you're not going to stop. You're not going to end racism. What you can do is that you can mitigate the results of it. Maybe. But you're never going to end it. Wow. I don't know. I know that blows people away. And my detractors who who happen to catch a, an episode here or there, either uh, here on YouTube or um, on on the other podcasting platforms, uh, you know, you hate this. I know. I know. There's another person I watch, and this is, I guess, because it hits because it hits home a little bit. Um. Who did a, uh, a a TikTok about? And I guess the line was, "I guess fat shaming wasn't." Uh, I guess what we went stop. I guess not fat shaming was not the best way to end obesity. Okay, but you're not going to end obesity. I mean, just just the idea that you could end it. Like, well, people are fatter than they've ever been. Maybe. Seeing that you've not been around, none of us have been around since the beginning of time. Nobody here. So I guess maybe you can say that. Maybe you can say people are fatter than they've been since humans have been paying attention. I guess. Or maybe, which means maybe fatter than they've been in the past, I don't know, 100 years. So when you start looking at the age of people, how long people have been around, no matter if you have a biblical view of how long people have been around, 6,500 years or so, or if you have a, <clears throat> a Darwinian view of how long people have been around, people have been around for... Uh, for a thousand years, it's still a really small sample. And there have always been people who are bigger than others. 
people who are fat. Always. You know, when I see these pictures on social media, the best thing and the worst thing in the world. Uh, and and I see, you know, there's like a, a scene of people walking down the street and everyone seems thin. And I'm thinking, and, and the assumption is because in this particular picture, this particular time, this particular slice, this time slice, which is infinitesimal, you, could, you, you got a shot of people walking that weren't fat. And you didn't see any fat people. That you take that and you extrapolate that out to there were no fat people until McDonald's. There weren't any fat people until Supersize Me. There weren't any fat people. This is stupid. And my other job, I have uh, I, I have opportunity to look out my window of my my station and see people come into to where I work. And I'll, I'll notice that there'll be five minute periods of time where everyone who walks through seems to be ready for the Olympics. Everyone that walks through. And then there's there's slices of time where everybody who walks through seems like, oh my God, oh my God, did we open a club bounce in here? all com completely by happenstance and the idea that you're going to end something that you're just going to end it by the force of the people's will and i'm gonna i guess shame people into it or embarrass people into it. it's it's never it, frankly it's never worked before it, no matter what whether it be misogyny racism obesity you name it it's never worked before that you can embarrass an entire culture into making a change. Foolishness. And we've not been able to uh, embarrass people who are stupid to stop talking. Well, evidence by I'm talking. <laughs> so this this whole idea is is hubris. Uh, that makes us think that we can we can fix it, we can stop it. We need to stop that. That's what we need to stop. Because we can't fix anything. The only thing that can be fixed or stopped is you. You, if you are me, and I am feeling that I am overweight, and I guess I am, you can't stop me from being overweight. I can stop me from being overweight. And all the things you say about me, write about me, uh, none of them will have any positive effect. None, zero. Only the, only, the only thing that I can do is have a positive effect on me. If you are, if you have racist tendencies, I can't stop you. No. Frankly, I'm not even going to try. If, you, if there's something about you you don't like, you have to change you. And if that's racist tendencies or misogynistic tendencies, or um, if you are, are xenophobic uh, or homophobic or Islamophobic or a, a, a phobic, a phobic, you're afraid of being afraid. Um, is that, well, what phobia is that? The, the fear of being afraid. If you're just phobic, only you can change you. So if you're interested in, in, in ending racism, the only the, the only thing that you can do is end racism in you. And once you end racism in you, may live a lifestyle that maybe somebody else will want to end racism in themselves. So this whole anti-racism thing is such foolishness there are no there are <clears throat> i almost said no there is such a small percentage of people who are pro-racism 
and for the anti-racism people to say that if you're not anti-racism like me, then you're pro-racism is a foolish, ridiculous premise. Because <clears throat> there are very few people who are pro-racist. Very few, especially in America. Especially in America. We live in this in this salad, this fruit salad. Yeah, some people will call it a melting pot, but I don't believe it's that anymore. I think it's more of like a, like a fruit salad. You can see because you can see all the different colors. You look down in the bowl. And, you, you can look down in the bowl and see all the different colors. And if you pull one out, strawberries. Cantaloupe, watermelon, all taste different. Now, what you hope to do if you eat, get a, get a handful or a spoonful. You hope to do is is have all those flavors sort of meld together and be pleasing. But they're all separate and distinct. You know, someone used to call America a melting pot. It's not, and I don't believe it ever was. It's been more like fruit salad. A wonderful, fresh, delicious, invigorating fruit salad. And that I don't want to end. I want us all to work together like that delicious fruit salad and have all our flavors mingle to where it's beneficial. Fruit, fruit salads are beneficial and delicious. End racism. Probably not. Probably not. Some strawberries aren't, aren't going to like other strawberries. Some watermelons are not going to like or live well with other watermelons. That's just how it is. Worry about you. You know, my you know, fourth grade teacher would often say, don't worry what, about what other people are doing. Worry about you. Just worry about you. Fix you. And if everybody does that, things will almost automatically be better. All right. That's my little rant for this morning. I trust that you are well. And uh, we will see you when we see you. You got to get out of here. So go ahead out there and, and, and learn something, love somebody. And for goodness sake, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Come on now.